Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome mod for the Retro Flag G Pi case. Now, if you're not familiar with the G Pi case, this is basically a little Game Boy clone powered by a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W. You can install Retro Pi, Laka, or Bados Air and play your favorite retro games on the go with this nice little handheld. Like I mentioned, this is powered by the Raspberry Pi Zero. We have one core at one gigahertz and 512 megabytes of RAM. So obviously, this is a very low performance single board computer that you place inside of the G-Pi case. And ever since its release, a lot of people wanted more power inside of this unit. So today, we're going to be adding a Raspberry Pi Compute Module Plus, which is basically a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus minus the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and USB ports. We have one gig of RAM, a quad-core CPU at 1.2 GHz, which is much more powerful than the Raspberry Pi Zero. But before we get started, I do want to give a big shout out to Matt over at Akuma Mods for sending this over and a few extra goodies. Now, if you're looking for any kind of mods for your G Pi case, he's got you covered. He's got a store over on Etsy. I'll leave a link in the description. He's got these kits we're about to take a look at up for pre-order. It comes with everything you need, even the compute module. Or you can head over to the Retro Game Store. Both links will be in the description and purchase just the GPI made itself without the Compute Module 3 Plus. So first things first, we have the muscle of this whole project, the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 Plus. It's basically a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus without any I.O. No HDMI, no USB, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, but we still get that quad-core 1.2 GHz CPU and 1 GB RAM. Next up, the GPI made itself. This makes all the magic happen. This interfaces with the compute module to the GPI case and you plug it right into the cart slot on the GPI case itself. No soldering whatsoever is required for this mod. And finally, the GPI Mate case. So basically we have a bigger cartridge here. It does come with some labels that you can put on and I'll put the black ones on. It's just the case for the GPI Mate and the compute module so you can plug it into the back of the GPI case very easily. Now for me, I'm going to be running RetroPie and there is a base image floating around for the GPI Mate so you don't have to do any setup. You will have to add your own games, but that's about it. You just flash an SD card, assemble everything, and boot it up. So let's go ahead and get this thing together. I've already placed my labels on the GPI Mate case. I'm going to insert my SD card. This is already flashed with the base image. Plug in my Compute Module 3 Plus. Snaps right in here. And now I'll just assemble the case. There are two exposed micro USB ports on the GPI Mate, so it'll easily allow you to transfer ROMs over USB or add a Wi-Fi dongle if that's something you want to do. Everything snaps together really nicely, and obviously this has to be a bit bigger than the original cart that came with the GPI case because we have that Compute Module 3 Plus. So the cart itself does stick out the top a bit, but with that nice little cart label, I think it looks really good here. We do have access to two micro USB ports on the GPI Mate, plus the SD card in case you ever just want to swap images out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. We'll get it all booted up. I'll add a few games and then we'll test it out. So here it is. The installation went fine. In order for me to get my games over to the unit, I used a USB stick and a micro USB adapter and I just transferred them over USB for RetroPie. Now this unit in its stock form with the Raspberry Pi Zero is a really awesome little unit, but there are some games that lag out and stuff that I've noticed. So first up, we're going to start out with something a little lower end with Sonic Advance 3. This one is a fast paced game and I've just had issues with it on the Pi Zero. And so far, so good. Everything's looking great. I do have the FPS listed in the lower left-hand corner. I know it's a little hard to see, but we're at a constant 60 FPS on the Compute Module 3 Plus. Next up we have some Neo Geo with some Metal Slug 5. This is using the Final Burn Neo Core and it's running great here. We got a constant 60 FPS and while the Pi Zero does handle Neo Geo quite well for the power it's putting out, there are some lags in a lot of these games. But the Compute Module 3 Plus will play everything perfectly.
When it comes to N64 on the G-Pi case, we're kind of limited because we only have a D-pad. We don't have an analog stick. Now, there are ways to turn this D-pad into an analog stick for certain games, but we'll still be missing our C buttons. In the past, I have tested N64 on the Compute Module 3 Plus, and it does handle Mario 64, Mario Kart, you know, the lower-end games very well. But unfortunately, we're missing some very important buttons on the G-Pi case for N64 emulation. getting a constant 60 FPS with PlayStation emulation. Now I know it's missing a couple trigger buttons, but overall most of the games will be playable with a setup like this. There are some games that did require analog sticks, but if you really take a look at the whole PS1 catalog, you can get away with the button setup on the G-Pi case. Even Bloody Roar 2 is running great on the Compute Module 3 Plus in the G-Pi case. This is a harder one to emulate, one of my favorite fighting games. But it's a non-issue for a setup like this. So in the end, I think the G-Pi Mate is an awesome modification for the G-Pi case and it really comes down to what you want to do with your portable handheld. Yes, this definitely adds more power to the G-Pi case, but we're still stuck with the same button layout. A single D-pad, start, select, A, B, X, Y, and on the rear of this thing there are two trigger buttons, L and R. So some of the higher end stuff is still going to be pretty much unplayable here because we don't have a single or dual analog stick, and not to mention we only have two trigger buttons. Either way, I personally love this idea. The G-Pi Mate is a great little addition if you want to get a little more power out of your G-Pi case. So when the G-Pi case was initially released and I did my first review video, I stated that I was going to do a LiPo mod so we could have a rechargeable battery in here. And one of the reasons I never got around to it is because I've been using these nickel metal hydride batteries and I've been perfectly content with it. You can pick up an Energizer set like this for around $15 from your local Walmart or Walgreens and they work perfectly in the G-Pi case. But if you do want to add some type of rechargeability to the case itself, Akuma Mods does offer a nickel metal hydride mod kit. It does require disassembly and soldering, but when it's all said and done, you can charge your nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries directly in the unit from the power port on the side of the G-Pi case. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave some links in the description. Keep in mind, they're on pre-order right now. I think the first batch was already sold out, so they should be getting some more in stock in January 2020. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.